music with the programming. I'm Chase Ingram. I'm Captain America. And along with me is Bill Grundler. Wolverine. So they announced something yesterday. I saw that. They and, announced. And, you, and all, all I could picture was this. <laughs> yeah. Yes. If I had to tell someone what CrossFit was, I would have them do Helen. Because it is the workout. Dun, 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 dun. I hope that's not like a depiction of how you think I sound like. But that No, it, but when they announce it, it, I know that that's exactly what that looked like. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the first announced event of the 2023 CrossFit Games is Helen. Beautiful, sweet, succulent, elegant, simple Helen. A version well, of it. well, maybe, yeah, no, maybe, <laughs> maybe, with, yes, with the asterisk of just announced by the CrossFit Games via their Instagram page. The all individual age group and adaptive athletes will do a version of the benchmark workout Helen at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. Top athletes from around the world will compete for the title of the fittest on earth August 1st through 6th in Madison, Wisconsin. Learn more and get tickets at CrossFit Games, games at CrossFit Games. Blah. Now, I just thought about this. All individual, age group, and adaptive. Yep. No teams. Nope. No teams. Well, how? Uh, I mean, unless you did it like a relay style or something. Uh, pairs. Synchro. Done. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> <laughs> you do a now, but your pair does a round, and then your other pair does a round. And you do like six of those. I, I, I would say if you pair it, then you go opposite directions. Ooh. One does run, pull up, kettlebell. The other one goes kettlebell, pull up, run. Or pull up, kettlebell, Or run. pull up, kettlebell. Yeah, whatever that. Like that. 12 well, okay. 12. This is what I want to do off the show. Uh, by the way, welcome, everyone. Draw your dagger. Caden, two weeks, buddy. Teddy. Yeah, gotta be ready. Teddy, I feel like it's been a while. Bailey, how are you? Barclay, what's up, dude? What's up, dude? Uh, this is a great question that Barkley has, which we will get into as we uh, before we uh, start this. This is an educational show. We've been analyzing the programming for over three years. We started way back in 2020. Oddly enough, if you guys are following us on Instagram, we are re-releasing all of our analyzing the programming from the CrossFit Games from 2007 to 2022. I've been listening to them, and it's you know we, we've gotten better. <laughs> it, it weren't bad, but you could tell we were just trying to figure out what we were doing, the, the, the rhythm, the flow. Well, this platform, yeah. Platform. Totally. Right. And it's uh yeah, it's uh it was it's it's cool. So, you know, we get this question asked a lot is one, nobody can find our old stuff. And somewhere in the world of technology, like half of our stuff, like anything prior to twenty twenty one, I cannot find either. That's weird. Yeah, so that kind of sucks because it's in our our like holding thing. So basically, what we do is like we get this audio, we upload it to a website, and that spits it out to all these other podcast platforms. Right? That's that's basically how you run it, and it's all in there. But if you go to Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Google, like if you just try to get earlier episodes, it doesn't really go past twenty twenty one, which kind of sucks. What if uh, I wonder if I could do? I mean, we have the audio recordings of that, right? Yeah. Uh, so yes. Yeah, so I have all the audio. That's the thing. Okay. Right? I wonder I, if we I just. All. I can just put the audio and just put like a. We just put a picture over it, and then we can put it up on the YouTube channel. Oh yeah. Yeah. At least log it that way, so we have those like the games ones and stuff like that, so not so hard to find. Yeah, I'll figure it Something out. Something to work on. Something I'll to work figure on. It out. But in that vein, is that he's like, hey, you know, people talk about like, hey, let's go through Cross the Games program. We're analyzed Cross the Games. Like we've already done that. We've been doing it for three years. It's the whole point of the show. Yeah, we're re-releasing our programming analysis uh, episodes on the CrossFit Games one per day. We started on Sunday. Uh, I think uh, Sunday, Saturday or Sunday. Sunday. We're, we're yeah. already at two thousand and nine. That just got released today. Every day at noon central, noon central, we're releasing an old analyzing the programming episode every day leading up to the doorstep of the twenty twenty three. CrossFit games. So if you guys want to listen to those old, old episodes and relive some of the moments with us, go through the programming with us, give your own personal thoughts and analysis, and really see how we pick apart these things. Again, this is all, at the end of the day, our opinion. Uh, I would say educated opinion, but still at the end of the day, our opinion. 
And today's episode is really centered around an education of how we go about doing that. So we're going to go through the, a few things that we leaned on. We talked about this in actually the 2007 episode of what we really look at is, you know, there's the What is Fix Fitness uh, CrossFit Journal article. There's, you know, a level two programming guide. There's really just things that we have developed over the years uh, with our own experience with programming and coaching and running affiliates and being a part of the CrossFit Games broadcast team and all these other things of how we analyze programming so that if you guys are watching, it's fun to watch from a fan perspective, but at the same time, it's kind of cool to watch from an educational uh, perspective, and we want you guys to uh, come along that journey with us. So, But before we get there, we're going to flex our programming predicting muscles, Bill. Mm. I'm going to bring it back to the announcement we just said. Helen, I'll give you two options. Option one, what you would like to see. Option two, what you will think it will be. For Helen at the CrossFit Games. Uh, what I think it will be. What do you... Th no, no, I'll, I'll, you get two options. Unless you oh. think it's going to be the same. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I thought I had to pick one of the... I had no, to no, pick no, no. one of the two. Okay. Here, let me just... I'll okay. start. Because I've already said my prediction on the show anyways, right? Okay. Not toot my own horn, but beep, beep. I predicted Helen coming to the CrossFit Games. Here we are. No big deal. Um, <laughs> my, my prediction was a games esque version of Helen. For example, Barclay just asked this question is Helen, can we really do Helen to cross the games? The answer is no. Right. Cause it's just running All reality, right? It's just a running, it's just running, it's running. With bad reps on the back end because that's the only way you can chase people down. So I was thinking, okay, what can we do that's Helen like? That is games level, challenge the athletes all somewhat equally. And mine was three rounds for time, 400 meter run, 12 kettlebell snatches on the right with 70 pounds and 53, 12 on the left with 70 pounds and 53, and 12 bar muscle ups, all wearing a ruck, the same ruck they used at semifinal. So I was like, this whole field got vetted with the ruck. The ruck kind of equalizes, it doesn't really make the run the run. The you know, running with the ruck is different. And that's my three rounds. That's the what I would think. Right? At the same time, when we think about Helen itself, that isn't really Helen. No, not even close. Not even close, right? But that's a games like Helen. Like, uh, I don't know, a harder version of another benchmark test that we've done in the past. So what I was thinking was, what I would, what I would like to see, this is my personal fandom, I would love to see pure Helen. I would love to see these athletes go out there and just like, how many can go sub seven? I get it's a running test at the end of the day, but what I would like to see in its purest form is just watch the fittest in the world do Helen, legit. No screwed up reps and short kettlebell swings and low chin over bar pull-ups and just watch them send six to eight minutes worth of just everything they can to go as fast as they can. I would like to see that. I know that's not the case. So there's my think and like. What is your think and like? Um... What I would like, and it was actually, uh, I got it from John Young, the, the fat bar, bar muscle up, doing it, doing that, putting that one in there, having the run be the run, mm -hmm. um, make the, uh, wouldn't be kettlebell swings. It would be, it would be single arm snatches. Definitely. Um, I, I think also when you're looking at that, it's okay. What's the standard going to be? We've seen it in the regionals way back when, what was that? 2011. Um, in the, in the hundreds chipper that they had, oh, regional, and yeah. nobody at yeah, reason, no one knew what the standard was supposed to look like. So that was, that made it really, really difficult. Uh, but I think a single arm snatch eliminates that cause you could have the athlete stand up and you don't give a shit what the bell does. It just, it's right. up overhead. Yeah. Um, so you have that there. Plus if everyone's going to be doing a version of this, then you could have adaptive athletes doing that part. Cause they could exactly. be doing single arm stuff, which I think is great. Exactly. Um, this was some really good chatter that we had in our, in our little text thread. But the, the one thing that I thought was like, I think that all of those are fine, but the, the piece that I really liked that John Young brought out was a fat bar bar muscle up mm -hmm. because now it's a, it's not, it's not an impossible movement, but it's definitely different. It's like when Dave used to have us in the open do a Fran-esque workout, but he never had 95 and 65. He'd have 170. It right. was just enough to throw everyone off. It was just like the, the same way they did the chest-to-bar pull-ups in the 2008 games. We never had done chest-to-bar pull-ups at that point. So all of a sudden, now we're doing Fran, 
and having to bring, having to move another three inches and it smashed people. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a little bit slower. It wrecked people. And I think that, you know, the, the bar muscle, we all the CrossFit games athletes are, are great at that, but that, that a thicker bar. Mm, yeah. I think what that would definitely change up and make it really fun. So I would say what I would like to see is, um, not necessarily a ruck. I'd keep the 400, the 400 so that they're, they're definitely sprinting, but then I would do the, um, 21 and 21 with the 70 mm -hmm. and the 53. Mm -hmm. And then I would do 12 with the bar muscle up with the fat bar and go yeah. that. Now that's what I would like to see. What I think that we will see. Um, I envision not so much it being uh, the normal setup where, you know, it's the, the three rounds and you do the whole thing and everyone's sub seven. Okay. Um, I see it being more of a either like uh, an AMRAP of Helen, so like ten minutes of Helen, oh. or um, one round of he one full. Let's see how would you do that. One round of Helen, but what they do is every. Uh, let's see, that be. Uh, so we'd have a something like a third. I'd have to play with the time frames a little bit, but do like one round of Helen, mm -hmm. and then you increase the weight or you increase the reps every single round as it goes up. So you start off with your twenty-one and twelve, and then it would increase to twenty-eight in or twenty-seven and you know uh, eighteen or something like that, and it goes up that way. Yeah. Um, to where you're not able to finish and those that finish kind of like you get to move forward that way. Something to that effect is what yeah. I think it would be. So they're adding to it, not a death by necessarily, but they're adding to the classic Helen, just building off that on every round. Okay. I, I, uh, you know, I, I'm keeping my prediction the same that I did last week, just for consistency sake. And just like, Oh, well, I'm just going to change my mind. The favorite version I've heard so far, I think, is John Young's that he said yesterday. Yeah, dude, it was so good. Like I couldn't even, I couldn't even pull away from that once he said it. I was like, once he said yes, it, yeah. yes, dude, that's awesome. That's and awesome. To give John Young credit, and we'll give you, please, like, say it again once you get on your own podcast. But right, <laughs> is he said three rounds for time, four hundred meter run, uh, twenty one dual kettlebell snatches at 35s and 26s. Yeah. And then 12 bar muscle-ups on a fat bar. And that is way more in line with what Helen was, I would say, 15 years ago or even 10 years ago when it came to the affiliate. And that's why I think it's just quintessential CrossFit from a beginner's perspective. Yeah. WMG, you know, 8 to 10 minutes. You know, at the time it was more like, nine to 12 minutes <laughs> time frame, right? Breaking 10 was like the first barrier in your first Helen. Um, but then you think about this whole new emphasis on grips, right? Okay, what would the benefit of having really, really long straps be? If you're on a fat pull-up bar or doing kettlebell snatches, right? Like getting more length on there with those grips to get around that basically circumference of a fatter bar there's a benefit to that and removing that makes it more of the gymnastics movement. It was yep. meant to be versus in uh, a piece of equipment holding you onto another piece of equipment. Yeah. Right. And so John young, I, I hope you're right. Um, so far, that's my favorite one I've seen so far because it, it, it still holds the pure essence of what Helen is, but elevated for games level athletes. And it's so funny. Cause I think just on the, when the general public hears 35 and 26 is, they're like, that's it? But these are like games athletes. Right. And every time you do a double dumbbell, double kettlebell, anything, mm -hmm. that number, it doesn't sound like it's a big deal until you grab it. And they can figure, okay, so it's, it is going to be the 70 and the 53, basically. Right. Um, but they will have, they will go unbroken. And it's just still like they would have done swing movement. Exactly. Like two between the legs and one swing yep. overhead without the, the, right. And you don't have to worry about the bell standing up a certain way. And it's like, no, you're, you're doing the snatch. So you are getting to where it can, it can come over and flop over on the back. I, I think it, that, that was great. Yeah. That was great. John, that, that was it. I, I, I hope he's right. Cause that, that, that creates, like I said, it creates the, and this is a great segue into what we're going to be talking about today, which is analyzing programming and dissecting it is that takes the essence of Helen 
where it's just really an all out sprint from end to end. Yes, running is a, it, once you get good, it's it's basically running because, you know, 21 swings and 12 pull ups is nothing. But the right. essence of it from its in, inception, which was like 2003, right? right? So this, this, this test is 20 years old, is, is, is kept, right? Mine with the ruck, like it fits, like that test itself all fits together, but it's not Helen. Right. It's not even close. It's running, it's kettlebell work, and it's gymnastics work, but it's not Helen. John Young's version is, is about as good as you can get, in my opinion. I agree. Games like Helen Test. I agree. Uh, Up to you, John. Uh, so, you know, we've talked about, we know that Fran it, it should never be put in the CrossFit Games mm -hmm. ever again. Fran, Fran. Explain Classic why. Fran. Explain why. Well, because the athletes are so good and so strong and so powerful and have such capacity that they, it, it's too light for them to slow down. And when you're going at that rate, you end up shortening your reps. So you end up losing the virtuosity of the movement um, just because you're going so dang fast. And it's not, I, I don't think it's a level of an intentional cheating but when you're pulling the bar down to increase your rate, you're not extending all the way. I mean, you would have to make it heavier just so that they have to press it out. Mm -hmm. You have to, you have to take that into consideration. So that's why when I saw Helen, I, well, one, I laughed because I knew that you were like, Giddy's a little schoolgirl running around. So I knew that you were all excited about that. I'm very aroused. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can see it right through your t-shirt too. It was like, right, right. <laughs> um, but I, but I was thinking, I'm like, okay, so, I, it said versions of, and that immediately was like, okay, at least they understand that that race for these athletes mm -hmm. would be a, I mean, you might as well just have them go on a track and race 1200 meters. I mean, cause the, the, the pull-ups, there's not enough, even, even, even for like the shorter range of motion, you're limiting that cause it's not that much. It's, it's only a handful of reps. Um, but that's where it's kind of like, you know, we've seen all these other uh, these other versions of like, uh, um, you know, version two of this workout and Nate version two and, you know, all the other when they when they put that in competition. So it makes me wonder, are they really going to do Helen mm -hmm. or is it just going to be some running stuff and some kettlebell stuff and some gymnastics stuff like like you were kind of thinking ahead of that? that yeah. That's what I'm interested is interested to see. I hope it's not mine. <laughs> like i know it'd be cool but like if we if we wanted to feel like helen right mine is just a it's a hard workout that's like helen right john's is that that's what helen is yeah there, there's nothing easy about there's there's no gimmies in that in that type of event the way he's no. constructed well let me ask and 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 uh philip had kind of a, a comment on here do you think that they should do like when they did double Helen back in the day when you did it, the like answer that, is no. Phil. That was not even close to being Helen either. I'm I'm actually I'm going to put a post up of Helen from <laughs> the games that year and show you. Right, <laughs> Helen was programmed in. Wait, what did you actually thought, didn't you have that up? No, oh, that was a picture. I think it was in our text I mean, thread, huh? Text thread. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's, I I had so a good. very 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 good judge, very good. But uh, others did not. <laughs> <laughs> and when the first round opens up with a 1200 meter run and 63 kettlebell swings, you kind of hope you got one that gives you a little bit of gray. <laughs> um, all right. So let's get to the lesson that we're here to uh, chat with you guys about. Again, is if you have questions, throw them in the chat. We'll answer them as they come up. But we're going to look at how to analyze programming, whether it's in your affiliates, whether it's a local competition or the CrossFit Games is that there's a pattern we like to dissect through. There's, there's things that we like to look at. There's balances that we like to see. There's, there's different modalities that we want to make sure all get touched in the same way. And uh, we're going to go through that. Right? And the, the best way to start is to say that we are not going to reinvent the wheel when it comes to deciding what fitness is. The benefit is that CrossFit already did that for us. Yeah, and when yeah. this whole venture already started is that we leaned in hard on the What is Fitness CrossFit Journal article, which if you've ever taken your level one, it's in there as well. Um, if you guys are watching on YouTube right now, I'll put it in the chat for you. Feel free to save the PDF. We've actually done a CrossFit Journal episode on this already. 
right? So we're not going to retread that, but we're going to look at some of the key factors of deciding what fitness is and how we determine fitness as part of the ways we decide if the test is good or not. So if we look at through this article, uh, we'll skip down to the thing, the world-class through uh, fitness through 100 words is part of this, right? And the top part is all based off nutrition, right? Eat meats, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, some fruit, little starch, no sugar, keep intake levels that will support exercise, but not body fat. Now that is for the general CrossFitter when we think of just general fitness. But in the meat part, in the middle here is Practice and train, major list, deadlift, clean, squat, press, clean and jerk, and snatch. Similarly, master the basics of gymnastics, and we labored this after the games last year. Pull-ups, dips, rope climbs, push-ups, sit-ups, presses to handstand, pirouettes, the next three kind of worry me, flips, splits, <laughs> and holds, bike, run, swim, row, etc. hard and fast, five to six days per week, mix these elements in as many combinations and patterns as creativity will allow routine is the enemy keep the workout short and intense regularly learn and play new sports now the end part i think dictates more towards crossfit games and outside the box things for something like that as the same thing is just spicing up is like what we do in the gym is for what we do out of the gym i mean you're a perfect example of that bill with your old profession as a firefighter and kind of what you do on the weekends right like you go out in the wild, you go out on the ocean, you jet ski and paddleboard, or you surf, or you go hiking. Like all of that is made easier by what you do in the gym. Yeah. And, and you actually brought up, I think uh, I was on the Sevon podcast and we were talking about, you know, uh, are people ready? You know, are the games going to look a certain way? And what came up was kind of the hidden, that hidden test of the CrossFit game. Maybe actually, I think it was our show and they talk about the adaptation mm -hmm. and the more fit you are, the higher you are across all 10 of those physical traits, the more ability you have to move right into whatever thing. Well, thank you very much, babe. That's my babe yeah. right there. Hmm. Um, it allows you to adjust to whatever's going to come your way. So you're right. Like I can utilize you know, movement from my core to extremity, balance and flexibility to allow me to get into these different things, to do all these different things, to allow myself to be. And this is what I this is one of the things that uh, that I really loved about CrossFit when I got into it, not on the competition on the competition side, but just CrossFit side is I want to be as functional as long as possible. And right. that's what all of the things are that we are doing in the gym to do that. And that's what's the greatest thing about our sport and our methodology is we have a definition and that definition is our guiding light to every single thing that we're doing, which I think is really important, especially when you come down to talking about programming. Yeah. And it all starts with this baseline example of world-class fitness. Now we can take this and layer it on the type of thing that we're trying to test or do or program for. Um, but that's the baseline nuts and bolts of it, right? Now we look at one of the first things that we touched on early on when we were first started looking at this is one of the, there's about three models when it looks at testing or programming for CrossFit or CrossFit events. And we talk about this a lot is 10 general physical skills. Now with these, are, there are 10, Dynamax created this, way back when, but there's cardiovascular and respiratory endurance, stamina, strength, flexibility, power, speed, coordination, agility, balance, and accuracy. Now, one of the, I would say, punts that happens sometimes is that we see a movement programmed and we go, well, it checks off two or three of these boxes in this 10 general physical skills. And depending on, I think, that movement is, I feel like that's a bad take, right? So, for example, you know, whether or not we like, say, double under crossovers, right, that requires a massive amount of physical exertion to do the movement itself, yet while still requiring balance, coordination, and accuracy, right? So, when we say those three, it's layered on top of the press, the, the, the foundation that it's a physical exerting style of movement for on the flip side. It's like, well, so is juggling. I was like, yes, but it's not physically demanding, right? When it comes that you're just, you're just moving hands in the air, right? Yeah. 
coordination, accuracy, balance, you know, all that is in play the same as a double under, but the phil- physical exertion it takes, like, I think there's a prerequisite to how you layer these things on to determine if it's a decent movement to use. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I, 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 I would venture to say that I'm using an extreme example, but just to say is like, we don't just use this list to determine if it's good programming. No, totally. And I think what's important on that is uh, like, and I, I boil this down and I'll say this, I'm probably sure a handful of times as we get going through this, this podcast even is I always start with, okay, what's my intent? What's my why of this particular either the event or the workout or the program or whatever. And then I go to look at this because it may be like, what would be the intent of putting juggling in there? Am I trying to do something with that juggling or am I trying to do something with the double unders or am I trying to do something with this heavy lift in between? Like there's got to be a reason what that's in there, not just because, well, this is hard or well, I'm trying to throw something at you and see if you can handle it. I mean, I don't I don't agree with those kind of Mm -hmm. comments to determine whether the programming is good or not. It's going to be like, what's the intent? Like, what are you what are you trying to test for or to practice or to build or to improve on or whatever. What is that? Yeah. Why? And then you start layering these on the, on, on top of that with the intent of trying to, you know, uh, move towards that definition or that why, or that, uh, definition yeah. of fitness or whatever you're looking for. Right. And as we go through these models, these models all work together, not in isolation. That's another big part of as we go through this, right? Fitness in the hundred words is being kind of a baseline for that. The theoretical template of uh, our hierarchy of an athlete or athletic development, we'll touch on here in a little bit. But these 10 general physical skills are things that we want to see within the movements that we use when we program them. But we want to see balance across this, right? What we don't want to see is, all right, look at all the variety of the movements and weights. And there's a perfect balance of monostructural gymnastics and, and weightlifting. Yet it's all power and speed oriented. That's when we look at this list to determine the balance of the programming going forward. Do you think that's fair? Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. So that's that's a big list there. So if you guys want to look at that, is like download the list. It has it's great, right? And there and there's basically three parts of this. Right, you've got your top four, which is like training, cardiovascular, respiratory endurance, stamina, strength, flexibility. That takes training. Right. You, you have to work on those physically to get better at them. Coordination, agility, balance, skill, and accuracy, those are practice. It's like, how do you get better at balance? It's like, well, you got to you know, stand on one foot, great. If you do that for 60 seconds, great. Now do it on a boso ball, great. Now do it with your eyes closed. Right. That's, that's practice. It's like throwing darts versus doing push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> and then speed and power are a combination of the two. Right. So we, we look at those. But have this at your side if you guys are looking at programming. And you see an event come up, say like Helen, he's like, all right, let's, uh, let's go take a look at the list and see what elements of these 10 general physical skills are being tested in this event, all right? That's just why we don't like the, the word test as an event name, right. right? The event is Helen. We are testing for this. Yes. Shh. Okay. So you win I'm the getting, event. Getting riled up. You win getting the riled event. Up. Getting riled up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so this is one part of it. All right. The other standard is the hopper model, right? A hopper model, and there's no photo of this, is basically the idea that we can take any movement in the world and put it into a rotating lottery drum. Maybe any workout in the world and put it in a lottery drum. Any physical task that, the, that there is on the planet in there, roll it out and it comes out, and then everybody does this. And we do 10 different ones, and the person that performs the best on average across all 10, we would dub as the fittest person on earth. That is really what is that unknown and unknowable element that we bring to CrossFit the sport. Right? That's why there's 10 to 15 events at the CrossFit Games, because this hopper model implies that we're just going to put all these different styles of tests in there to roll out and test a group of people with to determine who the fittest person is. And we've seen the same thing with, uh, sorry, go ahead. And we, I was gonna say, and we've seen uh, how there have been CrossFit games and events that we like, but when it all rolls into the same type of thing where you don't have that hopper, you don't have all of those different styles coming out, then all of a sudden we find out like, okay, well, the, the overall programming of this particular event wasn't good enough because it was all within the same model. And the thing mm-hmm. is, is that, You know, we've only had the hopper one time, actually one time, one event. One. Um, 
And that's probably a good thing because you have the opportunity of something happening where all the same things will come out. And then that kind of throws your test a little bit. So you have to kind of manufacture it at this touch. But yeah, I love the fact that like, that was the other thing, like at least for me, when, when, when I first got into CrossFit, it was that I want to be able to do anything, anything. I want to be ready to do anything. I want to go climb. I want to go hike. I need to pull one person out of a building and you put a hole in a wall. I need to push my car. I need to go, oh, we're going to do a triathlon. Sweet. Let's go do that. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to do that. And that's, that's what I really like. Yeah. And, and the fall, the, the flip side to the hopper model is that that's when the word random does come into play. When we talk about programming in the CrossFit space, because the, I, the concept is, is that when you take something out of the hopper, it doesn't take it out of uh, the rotation, right? So it's like, Hey, 5k run. It doesn't mean the 5k run never comes back. It stays in there. <laughs> right? It's just an unlimited source of things. So the randomized hopper model, again, doesn't work by itself, but in conjunction with, say, the 10 general physical skills. And now we start going into this. It's like, okay, uh, it's 5K run. It's like, cool, 10, all right, we're looking at cardiorespiratory endurance and maybe some stamina. All right, cool. All right, now what's the next one come out? It's like, oh, it's Helen. It's like, all right, so we got some Helen. Uh, we got some power output, maybe some coordination and agility. All right, moving on, right? And that's what we want to see. That's how we use these things together. And the idea of the Hopper model is the Hopper model is all 14 events of the CrossFit Games this year. And hopefully, they're all different variations as we march through how to look at programming, that there's a balance there in the testing, right? It doesn't all say, yeah, we had 10 events, but Bill, all we looked at was the first four uh, physical skills. It's happened. We touched none of the bottom ones. Like it's, there's it's a happened. deficiency, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's how we look. That's how we use the general physical skills as a way to analyze programming, not justify it per se. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think it's uh, uh, when we look at when we're looking at events and competitions and and programming in general. This is one of the lenses that we look through. I mean, I think I think honestly that there's a we will use a handful of different viewfinders to see. But this mm -hmm. is definitely one that we're looking at. I mean, you have that chart that you get out. I think it's a level two out of the level one, level two. Oh, yeah. it's coming. Where it, you, know, you have all your checks. So you can actually go that way. But then, you know, you have this one as well. Oh, you see it. There it is. Oh, this chart? Up there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, that one. <laughs> so you can, yeah, so you can see the pieces, which is great. Uh, but even like some of those pieces, they get thrown into that 10 general physical traits. So, I mean, it's nice to be able to have different lenses to look at multiple times to see if something is uh, a complete test or not, or as uh, a complete event, whatever you're trying to look at or, or competition or whichever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that, so that's the hopper concept, yeah. right? Yeah. What we don't want is we want a mix and blends of thing. And the idea is that you shouldn't be worried. And this is really the baseline concept. It, oh, actually, is that the orange? Is that shirt orange? Uh, yeah. Is that the just it's like, it's like a red? Yeah. It's just show up. Oh, I don't have that one. I like that. I do like this one. That's nice. Uh, I digress. <laughs> the hopper <laughs> concept is if I'm an athlete and I have all my boxes checked, I don't give a shit what comes out of that hopper. Right? But if you're not that and you have something worried, that's what you should be training for going forward. So like, oh, pl you know, Bill's like, please don't do uh, don't, don't do high volume double unders. Yeah, I was about to say, don't do. Keep them at like thirty five or so. <laughs> 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 time. Fuck. Right? I'm like, no, no deadlift, please. Right. And so when you look at your training with that kind of eye or that fear, is like, hey, whatever you don't want to come out of that hopper, this randomized assortment of please God no, that's what you should focus some of your attention on in your program in your training. Right. So that's that's the hopper model again by itself, not adequate but combined with their 10 general physical skills and how we look at the 100 words of fitness, these all things work together. Uh, next one is the metabolic pathways. Right? And think of this, if you guys are way smarter than us as far as when it comes to like all this stuff, like think of this as a massive oversimplification of things, but it keeps it easy. Three metabolic pathways. We have the phosphagen pathway, which is our shortest, pa shortest pathway. That is basically maximum 100% power output or energy expended, and it drops off after about like five to 10 seconds and lasts maybe 20 to 30. Also known as me in college. <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> stupid joke. 
<laughs> it's a joke, I swear. Uh, the next one is the glycolytic pathway. That is our anaerobic pathway. So that's, you know, it tips out power output, maybe about 80 or 90% of your maximum power output at about 60 to 70 seconds. Lasts as much as about two minutes, and then it, there's a steep drop off from there. And the third one is the oxidative or, say, an aerobic pathway. Um, th with this line, I don't think we get like 90%. Of hell our hell no. And it is, it's not over it's time. More of like a, yeah, it's a lower line. It's an old article. All right. It's, it's a lower line, but it kind of goes to the horizon uh, for an extended period of time. So think about like, operating at 30, 40% of your maximum output or, or energy for an extended period of time 30, 60, maybe two hours to three hours. Um, you know, the half marathons or the Ironmans, that that kind of extreme, but say 20 plus minutes for CrossFit testing standards. When you guys look at say, okay, let's go back to the hopper model, Bill, roll it out. Here comes uh, super Helen. It's basically double Helen with this pyramid scheme. Plus there was a max lift that you had like two or three minutes at the end with. It's like, all right. Okay, Bill. Now let's assess what this test really is, what we're, what we're testing for, right? And it's like, okay, well, if we look at super hell and we're like, okay, we're clearly getting the oxidative, right? Right. But at the end we have that lift. It's like, all right, we also hit the phosphagen. Now we look at the 10 general physical skills. All right. What got tested here? And you, I don't know, off the top of my head, you, you pick the six or seven that got tested in this. Great. Now let's look at, as we get later down the road, it's like, okay, let's go look at our movement library. What did we do? It's like, well, we ran and we pulled and we pulled. <laughs> and we pushed. It's like, cool. We, we dissected this entire event into what it's testing for and the elements within the test. That's one. And then you do that for every single event that comes out of the hopper. And what we don't want is there to be an excessive number of tests that fall into a particular pathway only or a particular two to three general physical skills only, and a particular movement pattern only, and time frame only. That's when we look at all these things working together. All right. Any anything more on that? Nope. All right. Uh, down to da, 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 common hey, ground. I got I got a question for you because I think people would ask something like this. Yeah. Um, when you go back up to the um, the energy cycles there. Got it. Do you think that when you did the Super Helen, mm -hmm. that even though you had the heavy lift at the end, that that was truly considered your phosphagen cycle because you just did all that running and all that <laughs> no, I, 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 at the end? Well, I mean, because people would say that. It's like, oh, but you did a heavy lift. So it's like, well, yeah, you really didn't test that phosphagen cycle because like you didn't, you weren't ready to go into that heavy lift that was uh what yeah. you have left in the tank through your you know what i'm saying yeah and i think this kind of goes along the lines of where we look at burpees these days how we kind of you know people say it's like oh it's more of a it's a monostructural movement it's like no it's it's actually a gymnastics movement right right so let's let's say what it actually is that part b of the test was actually a strength element test it fell in the category of the phosphagen creatine blast power speed because if you look at 10 general physical skills that's what it was testing right speed power strength that was See, it and that but and came that, in in a fatigued state right and i think that's what's important when you are have these different keys and these different lenses to look at they're not always going to end up perfectly yes that was a strength test but i don't believe that we were testing your phosphagen power output cycle on there we want to see how much weight you could lift at a fatigue state is what that was so you can get as scientific as you want but even still it's like okay let's look at all three of the tests or, or all three of the keys that we have and then line up our definition based on that because you're going to be able to kind of sit on all these different things and again yeah. there's going to be some you know like chase said in the beginning our, our our three cycles here are very boiled down i mean it's very let's just go the easiest way to explain it as possible so you have some sort of visualization for it um but you still it, it, as far as an understanding goes again where does it fit with the 10 physical traits what does it look like as far as your power output as far as what you're trying to do here and then again what are you trying to test when you're looking at that so that's yeah. why i just want to bring that up no nope. absolutely all right i got a request for this not that i know where it is oh. <laughs> 
Oh, jeez. All right. This is Super Helen or Pyramid Helen. Lots of kettlebell swings out there. Top left corner, blocked by the clock. <laughs> <laughs> there Same. I am. <laughs> Still <can't get> <laughs> oh, Breck Berry, Derek Merriquin. Dave Castro was the MC. I remember when he Curtis would do Bowler that, yeah. is a judge. But yeah, okay, they're in the middle, and I put it down, of course. God, it's getting no love. Chuck Carswell is my judge. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> <Is he spinning? laughs> oh, so tired, I can't feel my arms. All right, that's enough of me. <laughs> so yeah, there it is. Um, okay, yeah, uh, great question. And I think it's important, even though, yeah, did I, was the all test combined, did it ever dip into that? No. But that individual test by itself did. Right. Right. Sense, right? Okay. Um, all right. As we tap into this a little bit more, uh, we won't go through the sickness, wellness, fitness continuum. We've done that on a previous What is Fitness lecture. Uh, let's see. They have elements of training here. There's one I wanted to see. Um, where are you, Mr. Pyramid? They go through weightlifting, throwing. Oh, they have throwing in here. I wonder what they say about this. Port oh. extremity, dude. Let's see. Let's see what they say about throwing. The medicine ball drills add another potent stimulus for strength, power, speed, coordination, agility, balance, and accuracy. Hmm. There's a medicine ball game known as Hoover Ball. Yes. It's played with an eight-foot volleyball net and scored like tennis. <laughs> yeah. These games burn three times more calories than tennis, and it is great fun. The history and the rules of Hoover Ball are here. Oh, I'm so glad we did that already. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, sport, this is one here. All right. Uh, again, this is the theoretical hierarchy of development. I like this here because oftentimes I look at this pyramid as the season itself. Everybody bear with me first. Like the baseline of this, it's, it isn't a baseline, I would say, level of importance when you're developing fitness. Right? Maybe not testing fitness, but developing fitness. So nutrition is the baseline. It's the foundation for everything. Thank you, Eaton. Oh, Eaton, five. you're a badass. Appreciate that, brother. Thanks for the thanks for $10. Um, baseline for everything, right? If you got bad nutrition, nothing else above that will succeed as well as it possibly could. Then you have metabolic conditioning. Those are, those are the Metcons, right? Just the Helens, <laughs> right? Yeah. Those are the Metcons. I look at metabolic conditioning, if we're in gymnastics a little bit, is like that open, right? Metabolic conditioning, open tests. It's all, the burner, it's all the burner stuff. All the burners, right? Basic level entry baseline fitness. It's at the bottom right above nutrition for a reason. Let's just get you in shape. All right, let's get you in shape before we even worry about getting on the rings as we talk gymnastics and being lost. Let's get you in shape before we worry about doing handstand push-ups. Let's worry about that push-up first, homie. Right. <laughs> and you got gymnastics, which is like, okay, quarterfinals. Yeah, I got some rope climbs and quarterfinals, some wall-facing handstand push-ups, right, some ring work. And you got that weightlifting and throwing where it's like, okay, everything in the semifinals gets a little heavier. Right. And then we have the sport, which is the CrossFit Games. Like this, this pyramid overly simplified and let me, i get it is kind of a baseline roadmap to what the game season is do you remember when uh i think it was the 2019 games when they had all the cuts and everyone was getting cut mm -hmm. and one of the complaints was we didn't even get to do any of the cool crossfitty stuff yet we had to do all <laughs> this like other things and they someone actually pulled this out when they were talking about when that when all that went down they pulled out this this pyramid and they said well actually if you look at the events it actually runs just like this. They had all the medic metabolic conditioning in the, in the front end mm -hmm. and they had gym, like high skill gymnastic stuff right away. And then they went to some, uh, some strength, some power output, whatever they had all their cuts. And once they had all their cuts, then they went and actually did yeah. some like the quote unquote fun cross mm -hmm. type events. And, and it's weird because if you, you know, we talk about how important it is to make sure that you have, you know, we just did this on our last show with all, talking about the cuts, making sure that you have a very well balanced uh, handful of events before you make your cuts, right. so that you aren't getting specialists that run through. And then here we are looking at the 
pyramid that's exactly the flip of that. It's like, no, you need all these foundations before you can even get to that stuff and compete. Well, that and look at the f back to 2019, which was arguably one of the most important programmed events in the history of the CrossFit Games. Like, how are you going to cut yeah. 75 to 100 people in one event? It's like, well, it was, what was it? Was it three rounds, four rounds? I think it was, I think it was, I think it was three rounds. I'm trying to find it. I'll, I'll 800 meter run. Let's see. Uh, legless rope climbs in the snatch. Yeah. Uh, what was that? 2019. And then we saw games athletes that couldn't do legless rope climbs. <laughs> games athletes. <laughs> Put that in quotation Yeah. All right, 2019. I'll pull this up right now. First cut. First cut. Four rounds for time. 400 meter run. Three oh. legless rope climbs. Seven squat snatches at 185 and 130. Okay. So let's go. Okay. So let's look at this. 1600 meters of running. Okay. Then we go to the three leg stroke climbs, 12, and then the seven squat snatches times four, so 28. Right? Oh, well, that happens to have all three. three. <laughs> <laughs> in the pyramid from yeah, metabolic yeah. conditioning to gymnastics and weightlifting and throwing, all supporting what our sport is. Like, it was, it was incredible. I, I, it, still, I still will say that that is the best and most important program workout event that has ever been done. I agree. Just I for mean, everything uh, that's centered around everything it. that it had to do the, like one, one event had to cut a massive field and there was no other way to do it, but it was a good amount of running. So you're, you're well into that metabolic conditioning. I mean, we saw what it did on the legless rope climbs. We saw what that did to people. And then the snatch, we saw games, athletes, big names failing. Squat snatches. Yeah. At 185 on the men's side. I, yeah, that, I, that, I mean, awesome. 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 I loved it. Yeah. yeah. And Okay, so that's, that's okay. So, so there's the pyramid, right? The reason why I like to look at the pyramid is because people that are learning how to program, and I, and I say, see that positive spin I just put on that? <laughs> have this idea that it, if everything is to be balanced, right? We say balanced test, they'll think automatically, oh, that means everything needs to be equal. 33.3% metabolic conditioning, 33.3% gymnastics, 33.3% weightlifting throwing. No, that's not necessarily the same thing because of you got to look at the movement itself, how long it takes, how much that takes over the entire test, what the difficulty of three reps is versus, say, a 400 meter run. So, for example, when we look at a balanced test, is that we have to look at things on the with, through the scope of the effect of the particular movement and the effect that it has on the whole event. So, for example, 400 meter run times four. Okay. At this juncture, we're thinking what? Two minutes? Yeah. Right? Two minutes because the other parts are a bit harder. Those legless rope climbs, I think, were above 15 feet. <laughs> right. <laughs> they were high, and it's only three. So it's like, oh, well, it's three versus the seven reps. That, that's not very balanced. Like, no, no, those three legless rope climbs, depending on your skill level, could have taken two minutes. And we saw that. We saw that. Happen. It took longer than that for some people. Good, right? <laughs> right. And it's like, okay, so the 400 meter run time, though not as physically demanding as, say, three legless rope climbs to 15 to 18 feet, the time it took to do the three legless rope climbs was a pretty decent offset for a 400 meter run. And then you look at seven squat snatches at 185 and 130. Those are going to be done in singles. And at the same time, even if you did one every 10 to 15 seconds, you're looking at 60 to 90 seconds worth of work. Mm -hmm. And in all actuality, all of this stuff is kind of working together in a round taking somewhere between four to five minutes of a balance of all these tests. I mean, think about that time cap, 20 minutes. Yeah. That's tight. Tight. <laughs> that is a tight. tight time cap. Right. And so that also forces the issue of certain, the way certain events are unfolded. So it's not, well, 
the monosocial element should take 90 seconds, and then the legless rope climb should take 90 seconds, and then the weightlifting should take 90 seconds. Like, that's not necessarily what we mean by balance, but a balance of difficulty, a balance of challenge, a balance of time, a balance of energy expenditure. Like, these are the things you have to almost trial and error your way through. Well, and then that's what testing of these events, when you're trying to make sure that, it, that you did, because it'll look great on paper, and then you actually put some people on it. You're like, oh, that did not look right at mm. all. Or when certain things get blown by, when you think that the athlete should be right around here, be right around this time frame, um, yeah. and then they just blow it out of the water. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> right. They, they run way faster than I do. <laughs> yeah. Or they're much better at, at the uh, rope climbs than I am. Right. Or if the rope climbs were 25 feet, it's like three might be asking a lot. Yeah. Or maybe it should just be like one. <laughs> yeah depending. or two like these are the things you tinker with and you look at um and then you take this you take this event and you dissect it using the three models ben smith killed this event he was yeah of course totally he did great it also looked much better being in heat one and being ben smith <laughs> <laughs> part of the equation um all right so for this portion of looking at programming guys is we had the 10 general physical skills, right? Traits and things that we would like to see infused in a particular movement or an overall test. We look at the different metabolic pathways, right? Say just short, medium, long duration for, for starters. We look at the concept of a hopper models, whatever comes out, we take this test and make sure it is what it is by designating what general physical skills are being tested? How does it line up with what modal, uh, metabolic pathway we're doing? And on an extra note to that is, you know, what type of movements are being tested at the same time? And if you've taken your level two, and we use this a lot in the beginning as well, now we, we've expanded this a little bit as, you know, this is a very limited sample size, but if you go to your level two training guide, I believe it's page, uh, let me see, page 66, it's just a programming analysis worksheet. Now you can do this for programming you have at your affiliate. You can do it by the month. You could do it by the workout. You could do it by the week. You could do it with a, uh, a local competition. You can use it for analyzing semi, like whatever. Like we use this a lot. And so, okay, now we take, let's just say first cut because that's what we've been talking about, right? Is, all right, let's take first cut. And now we look at this little worksheet here. It's like, okay, so with that we know we are testing most of the 10 general physical skills, right? It's in a 20 minute time frame, So that is well in the oxidative, longer time duration, right? But now let's look at this like, okay, we had gymnastics. Okay, we checked that box. Uh, we had weightlifting and I would say it was heavy for the volume we were doing at the intensity it was. 185 snatches, like that got heavy. You could probably say moderate for those games athletes. Uh, yeah. Right. So say moderate and we had monostructural. All right, so we hit one, one and one. Then we look at time duration. Okay, 20 minutes plus. All right, sweet. I checked that. Uh, total repetitions with the run and the snatch of the rope climbs. This is actually a, a low rep one, particularly. Uh, it says less than 50, but times four rounds. I would say this more moderate when you include the run. And I think what's important to know on that part is low rep doesn't mean that you can't have a long event. Mm. It depends mm -hmm. how it's set up here. So it's like, right. so here we are. We're under 50 reps. So it's like 50 reps. I. You know, I just did a workout today that had 50 wall balls right out of the gate. That was the first piece of it. But you have to look at what it is. It's just something to kind of, so you're looking at, all right, well, how much volume are they doing over the course of whatever? How many of these things are they doing? How many of those things are doing? It gives you a nice generaliz generalization, uh, sweeping overview of what it is rather than, oh my gosh, it's a low repetition mm -hmm. workout for 20 right. minutes. Right, Exactly. Uh, and the runs are in there. Okay, time duration, 20 plus minutes. Great. We're, we're just giving an event all these little checkpoints mm -hmm. as we analyze this. Total repetitions, we'll say moderate scheme. It's a triplet priority task, meaning you were given a certain amount of movements and you did it for time. If this was an AMRAP, like uh, Chelsea or oh, is it Mary that they had at the games, mm, Yeah, uh, that's a time priority. Hey, you have 20 minutes, do as much as you can. And then we have basic movements. All right, what is the gymnastic movement? It was a rope climb. Great. What is a rope climb? Well, it's really, it was legless. So that's an upper body pulling movement. Okay. From vertical to basically center of mass. 
the weightlifting movement was a snatch, which really is a pull from the floor, a squat in the receiving position, and a little bit of a press in the stability overhead. It, it has all three elements. That's why snatch is just such a great movement. Right, it, right. Like it hits everything. It, the movement itself hits nearly every 10 of all the gen, general physical skills. Right? And then under fatigue, balance, we get into stamina and power. Yeah, exactly. Right, right? Right. And so it's like, okay, great. We did that for first cut. Now I know what metabolic pathway this test or this event was testing. I have a semblance of general physical skills that were uh, displayed. I know it fits this time frame. I know the movement patterns that were tested in each individual movement and collectively throughout that. And whether it was a monostructural movement or a weightlifting movement or a gymnastics movement, number of repetitions, the type of weights used, like all of these things come into play. And that's one event. Right. And then when you get the next event, guys, you just do the same thing. You do the same thing. It's like, all right, what is event two? What is it testing? What modality are we sitting in? What pathway do we get stuck in? What type of movements do we have? What modalities are we using? What type of movement patterns are there? How long did it take? Okay, how does that fit with this one? All right, now you look at the number of tests that you have. And I think we've always argued this, Bill, is like, it's much harder to program a good test to fitness in four events than it is in 10. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and for those that don't really understand what that means, like walk them through the difficulties there. Well, okay. The less events you have, the more things you need to cram into every one of those events to make sure that you are checking off all those boxes. When you have a broad breadth of events, you can, you can have one that is, you know, leans more towards just pure strength or just pure gymnastic or just pure uh, monostructural. When if you had only a handful of events, it'd be really difficult to do that. Now, granted, when we looked at 2007 games, it had those three things. And for what it was for only having three events, it really did check the boxes for what our definitions were looking for. And I think what was great about that was not that it was the greatest programmed games, but it was our first attempt mm. of how do you program to our definition so that we can kind of get a, a groove for what that is. Um, but again, like we haven't had any other games or any other uh, co competitive situation. I mean, we talk about six at the semis and the regions and the sanctionals and those events. And even that can get dicey where it's right. like, you know what? They missed all of these things. There wasn't any squatting in this event, in this competition at all. There wasn't any of the, there wasn't any long. We only stayed in this one duration. We didn't have any high output short. You know, I mean, you can start to see that as you get going. And the more events you have, the more opportunities you have to fill in all of those gaps, which it is tough with, with less events. Yeah. Uh, a perfect example, like you said, 2007 was surprisingly perfect for its time. Yeah. yeah. But it was only three events. Um, and, and let's just do this really quick, right? You had the, the first test was the hopper and it was, um, all right, let me share the screen really quick. Thousand meter row buy-in five rounds, 25 pull-ups, seven push jerks at 135 and 85. Okay. So, so we hit that. You've got the row monostructural, you've got the pull-ups in the gymnastics and you have the push with the push jerks. This is real. I mean, man, you look at that. That's almost like the first cut. <laughs> a shitload of pull-ups. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And it was a thousand meter row buying. And that time everybody rode really hard because they didn't know how to pace. But that was the first test. It was the hopper model in itself because it came out of the hopper. Right. Hopper model. Okay. So what if we, okay. 12 to 15 minutes, I think was some of the best times that we had here. Yeah. It's a triplet. Uh, well, ish the buy-in with a couplet really yeah yeah right okay well what else did we test that time oh we tested the crossfit total yeah, yeah. the crossfit total one at max back squat one at max press one at max deadlift okay now we went heavy strength power right and then the last one we would, it was the trail run and it was about a 5k trail run off-road on the ranch, elevation changes. So we're looking at, okay, 12 to 15 minutes on a chipper-esque couplet. 
And then we had the trail run, which 5K on a trail. We're looking at 30, 40 plus. <laughs> you guys haven't been to the ranch. It's not fun to run it. Okay. And then we had the CrossFit total. So we tested strength in three different ways. We tested just classic CrossFit coming out of the hopper with different movement modalities. And then we tested uh, aerobic endurance and stamina. And in 2007, when everybody was just trying to figure this whole thing out, this by definition of the what is fitness lecture, this is it. I know, it's crazy. It's so simple, right? And so what we did is like you, you take one event and then you, you like, like we just did very quickly was just stat everything, plot on the chart. And to counter that, we'll go to the 2008 CrossFit Games. <laughs> and I had this discussion with somebody on a on YouTube, who's a, and it was a good discussion. They're like, we talked about best ways to test people. And it was, uh, they said this format, All right? So, okay, so let's look at, did it start with, it started with, uh, there it is. It started with chest to bar Fran. And everybody was in three to five minutes and it was a couplet. Thruster, squat press, gymnastics pull. By itself, he's like, great, classic, Fran. Yeah. Doing CrossFit, got it. And then the second workout was five rounds for time, five deadlifts at 275 and 185, and 10 burpees. Okay. Uh, it's another couplet. And it's cool CrossFit workout. Cool CrossFit workout. And it took about three to five minutes. Yep. Cool. Cool. Um, oh, the hill run. Okay. What was what hill run? Hill run, probably 750 meters in length, up and over, basically up and down. Fast you can go. Uh, 750 meters up and down. Oh, that's about three to five minutes. Hmm. Okay. Uh-oh. And then Sunday's workout was heavy squat clean grace. 30 squat clean and jerks at 155 and 100. It's like, okay, cool. Yeah. It's about three, three to five, five minutes. minutes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> And what did we test? It's like, all right, we had the first test, we had a barbell, and we squatted below parallel, and we pressed it over our head. Cool. And then we did gymnastics, and we did pull-ups. Like, all right, good balance. And what do we do for the second workout? It's like, well, we pulled a bar from the floor five times, and then we did burpees where we push ourselves off the floor. It's like, oh, okay, okay, got it. We need to pull a little bit. I see this. Like, all right, then we did uh, – an anaerobic blast test of our legs. I was like, okay, so we kind of did that in A, um, a little bit in B, but okay. But hey, it's, it's monostructural, so we, we brought it back, right? We've got monostructural, okay, that's one. Uh, it's a one-off, and then we have a couplet tier. It's like, all right, what about that? I was like, well, we, uh, for the last one, we pulled from the floor. I was like, okay. And then we squatted it. I was like, okay. And then we and then pressed we it over our head again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and, okay <laughs> and that's when we look at variants of programming 2008 this is why we say is like the worst program cross the games in history it was four three to five minute tests of all really the same kind of movement patterns and flow with a little sprint and a little pull-ups in there and some burpees and then you know it was cool it was, it was exciting to watch but when you analyze the program from this side, it's like, oh, man. <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it, 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 it was like, hey, yeah, this athlete, if you're the three to five minute power athlete, you are going to win this year. Because it was wheelhouse. Right? Jason Kalipa. Very special thing. Now, Jason Kalipa, to his credit. He came back. Expanded his. his uh, Repertoire. Uh, rep yeah. His resume. In a big, big way, and he had a longevity to prove that, right? Especially what he did in 2013 with yeah. the Burden Run and Triple Threes. Is yeah. that the same year, or was Burden Run 2012? Burden Run was 2012. Okay. Uh, yeah. No. No, that Burden was 13. Run. That was 2013. Sorry, 2014. Burden Run, uh, half marathon row with the 2K. Yep, yep. Right? And he's out there winning all the endurance events. Right. Right. And so... That's how you guys want to look at programming. So take all of these things and trial and error. And look, your own personal biases will come into play when it comes to certain things like that. But when you want to get as objective as possible, take the event, 
dissect what it's testing, look at 10 general physical skills, look at metabolic pathways, look at movement patterns, look at modalities, whether it's gymnastics, weightlifting, monostructural, look at volume, look at time, all of these things per singular test, and then look at the next one. And then you take all those data points and then you can see like where there's a biases. And it doesn't have to be 777, right? Even, 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 30%, 30%. That's not a balanced test. The balanced test is, did we go sub three? Yes, did we go plus 20? Yes, did we have two or three events that were in 10 to 15 minutes? Yes, did we had something heavy? Yes, all right, that's balanced, right? That's what we see is balanced, not well, we, didn't, we did only three monostructural movements, seven gymnastics, and 12 weightlifting. It's like, yes, because those are not the same things. Right. Also, we don't have as many of those in each category. So there's so many more weightlifting movements possible than there are in gymnastics. And vice versa, so many more gymnastics than there is in monostructural. We've got like seven to eight to pick from monostructural. So that's, that's part of the thing. Uh, let's see. Question for you, Bill. Will they ever get another chaos type workout? I don't think so. I'll follow up with do you want one? Uh I I love the idea of the unknownness. And we've had a handful of those, like you know, uh, when they sequestered the athletes in 2010, they came out and they tell them what it is and three, two, one, go, they'd head out. Or when they have no idea how many reps they have to do for the chaos. I, I think the idea is cool but i think it's better honestly as a training item rather than a competition item I, I think when you're not allowing athletes to go then the competition element in the race element isn't there anymore yeah so i don't yeah. i don't think so i'm in a camp of two is like there's certain events that i never want to see repeated because of what they were yeah i don't want to see chaos again the whole format that was great great I don't want to see push pull again either. Right. Oh, it's your favorite cross event all time. Is like exactly. So leader. I don't want to see a remake of Roadhouse. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't want to see that. For me, push pull was uh, we said it before, like my favorite event at the CrossFit Games, not because of the programming. It was just push ups and sled pulls. First cut was way better programmed than that. Oh yeah. But push pull. Like, I don't want, I don't need the remake, right? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't want that. Um, question here from Mark. Do you think they use similar sheet when coming up with the programming to make sure all domains slash skills are tested? How do you decide the order of events that are programmed? Uh, I'll take part A. I've seen in the past Boz's sheet, so to speak, and it's, Amazing. Like, yeah, the answer is yes. Like, there's all that in there. It, like, it's crazy. It's cool. I was like, I wish I could make something like that. Um, so, yes. Uh, part B for you, Bill. How do you decide the order of events that are programmed? Uh, well, I think it, depending on what sort of event it is, there could be kind of an intuitive feel or if there's like a – um, a, a hallmark that you're trying to hit or some sort of a thread that you're trying to kind of weave through, you can kind of do it that way. But it, when it becomes important, and we've talked about this in our other shows, is if you're going to have cuts, then it's definitely important about where you decide to put your events and how they're going to be tested before you get to those cuts to make sure that, that cut's going to be a, re a relative cut or not. So I think it, it all kind of depends on what you have going on. Um, because it, it, as the programmer and the designer of the overall competition you also want to think like okay what are we making these athletes do and what are they going to look like i don't want to beat everybody up and just hammer them in the front so that like by the time we get to the final no one can do mm -hmm. anything I and mean, you right. want people to be able to race to the end so it's like you know spread your long ones out so that they aren't just being beat down all the time don't have all your strength stuff right at the beginning um, and I'm mean, not saying that you couldn't do that, but you have to, I think that that's an element of like, okay, what, what type of show are you trying to put on for these athletes? Mm -hmm. It's not just a, you know, a Scantron sheet. You, you, you <laughs> have the ability to be able to make the best event and to get the most out of the athletes as you can. And I think that, you know, there are ways to think about that. So there's a, I think the, where you set things, there are some objective 
positions to hold. Right. But then you also have some very artistic feels that you can kind of get into that as you want just to kind of make your event look a particular way. And we found that out when we looked at the 2022 programming in reverse. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. No, like uh, we don't want the capital be the last event. Right. Of the day. Right. And there's a couple of things you think about, like you said, lasting effect of certain events. Yeah. And I don't want to do this like echo bike ma mania massacre and then do like a one max thruster event afterwards. Right. What is, what is the <laughs> fun? What, what are we doing here? But at the same time it's like, or I do want to fatigue them here and then test them under fatigue here. Like that's a direct purpose. And all of those, like you said, go into play and fit the scheme and the flow of the weekend. Yeah. But all right. That's it, gang. I mean, so, we can talk about this for four more hours, honestly. I just don't totally. want to overwhelm you guys. I, I, I hope as the events come out and when the games come up that you guys are out there and just just kind of pick it apart. Look at the stuff. Send us I, your evaluation. Yeah, tell us what you think. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna go over it anyway. Right. But I mean, you know, tell us what you think. Did they hit certain things? Did were there holes that you saw? Some will be like very obvious, and other ones will be like, well, that kind of fits into this, or okay, it rides a line on that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but like, take a look at it, play with it. And that's, I mean, that's part of the fun of of it, the the artistry of the programming is to see. Can you figure out what brush strokes were used? What sort of brush did they use on this painting? Mm -hmm. What sort of clay did they have when they were yeah. using event number six or whatever? Well, um, one more I did forget was movements that were, or uh, or failure points of the event. Like, yeah. What was the, what movement in here almost dictated the test? Yeah. A little bit, right? You don't want it to be the same thing every time. It's like, oh, in five of these events, it was a gymnastics movement. Right. <laughs> That's the problem. Right. right. Six right. events, it was uh, the monostructural piece or the machine. Like, that's a problem. And yeah. there's only seven tests or seven events, right? Like, so that's one more thing to think about is like, what is the deciding factor of failure or success in a particular event? You don't want those to all be the same either. Right. Um, but yeah. All right. I hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, read it. We uh, Articles we printed out. Go through, print out the What is Fixed Fitness lecture. It's on the CrossFit Journal. We put that in the, uh, in the YouTube comments. We'll probably put it on the uh, show notes. Uh, go through the CrossFit Level 1 manual where it has the, uh, what was it called again? The uh, Programming Analysis Worksheet. Again, these are all baseline things for you to use to guide your thoughts, to guide your mind, to ask the questions that come up. And if you guys have questions on this, like shoot us a DM on Instagram at get with the programming, throw it in the comments here on YouTube. Like if you guys have questions, like these conversations we want to have more on, make everybody more educated and the more educated everybody gets, the better we all get. And the more fun we have when we look at programming the CrossFit space. Then we have so much cooler conversations. So much cooler conversations because we want to talk with you, right. not at you. All right, team. What is it today? Is it Tuesday? Tuesday. Ooh, I, was, I forgot what I wanted to do on Thursday. I had an idea. And then I totally lost it. Had it and then lost it. Had it and lost it. I do want to get back to the CrossFit Journal, although I feel like we say that every week. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Stevon saying Daniel Brandon is coming on the podcast. Right. <laughs> or was it Jimmy Kimmel? It's like, sorry, get Matt Damon on the show. Better luck next time. But uh, <laughs> all right. You guys have a great Tuesday. We'll let you guys know what's coming up on later this week. But again, go to Apple Podcasts, go to Spotify or Google, whatever, wherever you enjoy your, odd, uh, your audio for the podcast and go listen to our old Analyzing the Programming series from 2007 to 2022. Again, one per day for the next two weeks straight, 16 straight days. We're going to release a podcast. We do go through all of these things and use the things that we talked about. And hopefully, with this better understanding of how we approach things, you can kind of see the patterns unfold alongside with us and determine your ratings for the programming as they go year to year. Other than that, yes, golf, foxtrot, Yankee, hit that like button. Do it, Share guys. with your friends. Thanks for rolling with us. See you guys next time. Later, guys.